Welcome to Drinking Bros, presented by GhostBed.com. Welcome to Drinking Bros, kids. We got the new studio in Austin, Tejas, and we uh, we let you guys come in. We let everybody come in and, and see the studio. If, if you're in town, uh, want to have a beer. We're always here recording Monday through Friday now, uh, ever since COVID hit, and we're going to continue that pace. Um, that being said, we never know who's going to show up to the studio. Today, we've got a couple of New Jersey dirt bags on the show. <laughs> tell, tell the audience your names. Mike Petronella, uh, born and raised in New Jersey. Um, my buddy over here, we used to work on the ambulance together for about four years. And, uh, it's a long four years. A very long four years, man. <laughs> Probably the longest relationship I've ever actually had with anybody. Um, yeah, just sent out an email and here I am. Here you are. Here you are. <laughs> Never so, would have thought. Are you guys EMTs? Uh, I'm an EMT. He's paramedic. For are now. You, you're a paramedic for, for now. What, are you looking to get out of the biz? Yeah. Yeah, I, uh, I have a few shifts left, and then I'm, uh, I'm getting out of the ambulance driving. I'm making parole to go work in a jail. <laughs> yeah, so. Oh, really? Yeah, that, yeah. That's what we used to call it. What's, when you finally get off the ambulance, you were paroled. Look at you. Your accent thicker than a Wawa. Uh, I love it, you. dude. <laughs> thank you. By the way, Wawa, awesome place. I, everybody, uh, I, dude, I had to. I had to give a shout-out to, to Wawa. Jersey let's go is, get hoagies yeah. from Wawa. No, let's go get a sandwich from a place that's known for their sandwiches. God <laughs> damn it. I'll stand up for Wawa, I'd rather dude. go to yeah, Sheets. But I'd rather go to Sheets. No. When your shit face drunk. Yes, yeah. true. Yeah. I'll go to Wawa. I'm a Wawa guy with you. No, uh, no. We've not been. I have not been to Bucky's yet. Here, everybody says Bucky's is the greatest goddamn convenience. It's just store like you're missing out, bro. It's a. Yeah. Oh, it's fucking great. Yeah, even, everybody says. Uh, we stopped at Ross, two Even I've been here, here man. Uh, yeah. So we have not. There's. I, we looked at the closest one from where I live is 37 miles. It's in San Marcos. So yeah. I, I have not been yet, but apparently it's like a Walmart slash gas station, but well, there's also food there. Yeah. Yeah. It's. Freaking massive. It's completely unnecessary as well. Oh, it absolutely. 100%. It is. So you've been there, Dan? Yeah, for sure. I've been okay, to gotcha. several of them. Yeah, but it's, it's the entire thing is completely unnecessary, but that's kind of what Texas and America do. <laughs> <laughs> unnecessary shit, and then in Texas, it's just bigger unnecessary shit. There's no you know reason I mean? you actually need that large of a gas station. No, dude. It's I just, mean, I, I, if I they were it. only in areas between major cities and not near and around major cities, that would make sense, I guess. Uh -huh. Like if you need shit out there, or maybe it's 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 kind of a kind of the way, same way a bodega. You could go get groceries back, like some small stuff back in the day. So you could go to Bucky's out here in the rural area and get small stuff. But the fact that there's one like 12 minutes from here, it's like, come on, man. I don't need the fucking. There's a Target and a Walmart. I don't need this. It's this a is truck ridiculous. stop that doesn't allow trucks. God, no, no, got some it. of them do. Some of them do. I don't know. The two that we went into had a sign that said no 18 wheelers. So. Is it that, do they have? Do they have diesel or no? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, and it's a gas station. You're good to go. You're good to go then. Whose shirt am I wearing, by the way? His. It's yours. Yeah. Uh, explain this T-shirt to the the. Well, it's not a T-shirt. It's a it's a grown man shirt. <laughs> I had to roll up the sleeves, so forgive me. I'm a tall drink, so I apologize. Uh, tell me what this this shirt is. So it's uh, my old uniform shirt from. Uh, the place that caused nightmares for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was uh, it was one of my two final jobs before moving from New Jersey to uh, good old Tejas. Yeah, and uh, some uniform shirt hanging out. I was gonna donate it to here, and then you threw it on. And then I'm wearing it. Yeah, yeah. I was like, dude, I'll fucking wear it on the show. I don't give a shit. Let's Hell party. Yeah. Um, tell everybody which who this is, so that way you can give your your homies a shout out. So, uh, is uh, I guess it's technically no more since they. I'll do the mergers with the hospitals, but Jersey City Medical Center EMS. Yeah. Okay. No, yeah. Jersey City Medical Center, the MC, will always the be MC. the MC yeah. to us. Uh, yeah, they, they kind of they merged, uh, bought, mer merged, bought, whatever you want to call Hospital it. Hospital systems merged. Yeah, there you go. Um, so and now it's Robert Wood Johnson and Robert uh, Wood Johnson. A couple of other. That's a bold name. Conglomerates, but yeah. uh, the old school JCMC, Jersey City Medical Center, that was their patch, and uh, that's where we actually came from yeah it's it's weird uh, right now like a lot of hospitals are being bought mm -hmm. by other places um we had one in, in wilmington north carolina and it got bought by uh novant um and it's like you wonder is the healthcare going to be better when you do something like that you guys work in that industry what is you, you oh you're already smiling about it what how bad is it going to get for those guys um so the only way that, and granted, I came from a very, very small part of the healthcare system. Sure. So uh, the only way I look at it is it does benefit some people because 
you're all going to the same place or the same doctors and they all work under the same system. Um, now, how that translates to actual healthcare, I don't know. I mean, hey man, I just drove an ambulance. Sure. <laughs> but, I, but I didn't know if you could tell if there was a difference or not. For example, uh, last night's debate. Um, we're taping the show on a Friday. We like to get rocked on a Friday afternoon with some friends and have some beers. You guys were kind enough to bring us a case of Vizzies, oh, which yeah, we man. already destroyed, by the way, uh, and are <laughs> well, gone. Well, most of them, I've actually, uh, without knowing, been hoarding them. Uh, I didn't mean to do that. By the way, I'm not, right. a fucking, I'm not a dick. Just whenever we do a show, I just grab a handful of whatever's there because I know I'm going to drink X amount. Eight to nine Vizzies. Yeah, 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 yeah. So you, you crush I, them. I said X amount to hide my alcoholism. Thank yeah. You. Thank I, you for No, but I outed you. You're welcome. Piece you're, of fucking shit. You're welcome. Um, no, but last night during the, the final debate, um, Joe Biden was talking about uh, raising the first responders uh, pay the minimum wage to $15 an hour. <laughs> yeah, right? and your comments were phenomenal. I think it was you that said yeah. it. Um, like, depending on where you are in the country, there are plenty of EMTs, paramedics, firemen, and cops that don't even come close to making $15 an hour. Yeah, there are, yeah. So, I mean, like, it's, it's in a city like Austin, no chance, right? But there's a lot of rural people. I mean, shit, there's, there's if, if you're talking about fire, half of those assholes are volunteers. You know what right. I mean? But uh, that's that's obviously a different situation. There are a lot of people in certain areas that are less than 15, and that's the problem. It betrays the problem of a, a, a federal minimum wage in the first place because it doesn't cost the same to live in New York or Austin or L.A. that it does to live in Tulsa or fucking some other small town in a fucking small state. It's just not true, like, right? So you're, you're, if it's about justice and equality – then figure out what the cost of living is there and maybe make that like a ch there, there was one uh, proposal, I think, where the minimum uh, wage would be tied to CPI or something like that, mm -hmm. like the consumer price index for a different area. If you live in live or work in this area and you can choose whichever is the highest out of the two. Right. Because if you live in fucking uh, northern New Jersey, but you work in Manhattan. Right. You're, right. There's still a lot of costs incurred just by that. Even though you're living in the suburbs somewhere in Jersey, yeah, yeah. you're still that paying. Commute sucks. They still yeah. cost you money, so you should be getting Thank paid you, whatever. Yeah, no shit. You should be getting paid whatever the highest one is, mm -hmm. and it's tied to the CPI, the Consumer Price Index. That makes sense to me, because that way it's fair for everyone. It's not like how how is it fair for everyone just to set one number for the entire country? That's right. stupid. That doesn't make any sense. I mean, that's. But, so it's well, Trump, Trump was alluding to it last night where he said, look, I've lived in a lot of places. And he's like, $15 is fine for some places. $15 mm -hmm. is too low for some places. Yeah. Um, same here. I so mean, like, the minimum wage in New York City should be like fucking 30, 40 bucks an hour. Probably. Exactly. Like, honestly, it should. Yeah. And, and, that, and that's what I was going to say. I've, I've lived in New York. I've lived in Los Angeles. I've lived in Atlanta. Uh, we're in Austin. And I've lived in Wilmington, North Carolina. Wilmington is, is cheap. Like it's, it's a, a very low cost of living there, right? Mm -hmm. um, unless you're going out to the, mm -hmm. the beaches. Uh, but New York and LA, good luck on $15 an hour. Like there's no way you can fucking live there because the rents are so high. So like you brought it up, you know, a department that shall rename nameless, um, close to where I work, mm -hmm. um, like their starting salary is only $31,000. Like, and for Northern New Jersey in that Before county, taxes. Yes, before taxes. If. Um, like that's coming down to like eight hundred dollars every two weeks that these guys are taking home. You know, that's not a lot of money. No, especially like for the area in which I live or he used to live, it's not that much money. Yeah. So to kind of put it into context, uh, I had to work multiple jobs when I, I lived in uh, New Jersey. And yeah, everyone in medical, EMS works multiple jobs. Yeah. So medical Everybody. center. Yeah, you don't want those guys rested and focused on their job, do you? No. Yeah. Not at all. <laughs> Yeah, uh, Red Jesus Bull was uh, my friend me. those years, yeah. but yeah. So I was making Caffeine anywhere nicotine. depending on where I was working, thirty to thirty-five dollars an hour, and I had to either live with my ex-girlfriend to split that rent up, mm -hmm. or go back home with my mom before I moved out here. But then I moved out here, I'm making nineteen an hour, and I'm taking home more money, and I'm right. living better. Yeah, I've never not had roommates. Yeah, I, and that's why people are moving right now, especially with COVID, right? Where they're trying oh, yeah. to figure out a new place to live, and the cost of, of living is, is really on the forefront of people's mind, especially with all their businesses closing. And, and, and everyone being able to work. work from home now, too. Yeah. Correct. So, like, you look at, you know, <laughs> New York City, mm -hmm. where, I mean, the housing market in New Jersey, I mean, houses are going like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's because everyone that used to live in one of the five boroughs, they're is like getting the fuck out. We of don't there. have to anymore. Yeah. We're working from home. Maybe I have to go in one day a week mm -hmm. or I can work completely remote. So why would I be paying so much money 
living in New York City when I can pay less money and live in New Jersey. Yeah, I, and, and I understand there's a mass evacuation from California and the state of New York right now because it's not just the city themselves. It's also the state taxes where you're like, absolutely, I'm getting fucking hammered here. Um, when I was living there, there was uh, uh, Hoboken. Uh, New Jersey. Oh, yeah. huh. <laughs> was, uh, <laughs> Very familiar with Hoboken. Yeah. So Hoboken was the hot spot. Um, a buddy of mine. Uh, it still is. The, the oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, still, yeah, yeah. 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 So a buddy of mine's father uh, from school, was he was the one who kind of built that up back in the day. Right? Okay. Uh, Brad Sakala is his name. I'll give him a shout out. Uh, and his father did most of the construction there. Mm -hmm. And, dude, I watched... The rents go, I mean, they doubled in like five years there. And I was like, holy shit. Downtown Jersey City is the exact same way. I mean, my old apartment um, is or was in downtown uh, right across the street from Jersey City Medical Center. And I Some mean, great times there. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, God, I miss <laughs> that apartment. Um, shout out to Pat, Brian and uh, the other Brian, my old roommates. But um, two Brian's. Living yeah, in the same yeah. house, one sucking each other's dicks? Yeah, one actually broke himself when he fell out of a plane. Uh, he's, ah. now, he's now in med school. Uh, he's doing really, really when well. When you say fell him. out of a plane, you mean jumped or fell? Uh, he jumped. Yes. Uh, okay. He did have a parachute. Yeah. <laughs> didn't uh, work. Like a, right. like a Southwest work. plane? Or? Didn't, no, 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 no. He's an avid skydiver. Oh, so, okay. Great, um, great, yeah, yeah, great, great. Um, it was just malfunction, and he hit the ground very, very hard. Um, so he's somehow alive. Lived. Yeah. 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 Uh, and walks. Uh, never in a million years would have... Does he fuck, too? Does his dick still work? Let's get to the meat and potatoes of it. Uh, dick still works, not speaking from experience. Just putting that up. <laughs> okay, because I know that's going to come up. All lies. <laughs> uh, so let me ask you, that, you guys this. Like, um, with what went on in the debate last night and talking about the minimum wage and everything else, mm -hmm. uh, knowing what you guys do for a living, because, you know, look, we, Dan and I are friends with tons of first responders, right? Yeah. Especially your job. <clears throat> how graphic it is, how fucking crazy and intense it is every single day. It has its moments. It is. <laughs> you guys are grossly underpaid. Why do it in the first place if that's the fucking salary? Um, I can only speak for me on that. Uh, I've always wanted to get into this. Uh, couldn't tell you really why. Mm -hmm. um, you know, everyone will try and use the, oh, you know, I really want to help people, this, that, and third. I'm just a kid that went through the cop firefighter stage growing up and never grew out of it. Like that, that's really, you know, where it is for me. Um, I'm still a volunteer fireman in my hometown where I grew up in Paramus. Um, you know, I became an EMT, worked on the ambulance for several years, and now I'm a police officer. He just likes so, playing with sirens. Yeah, obviously. Yeah. I mean, yeah. um, and the re re by the way, the reason I ask is uh, this has been a theme. You guys listen to the show. Absolutely. But pretty much every day. This has been a theme for the last, I don't know, seven months, it feels like, on our show with the – mistreatment of cops in particular and uh and just the lack of respect for first responders all the way around I, dan and i have said this back and forth to each other on the show is like dude if, if you keep treating these people the way you're mm. treating them it is the worst job mm. already and it's you're not getting a lot of money to do it people are going to leave and not want to do that job therefore with you guys on the show today i just genuinely wanted to ask what is in it to make you guys want to do it every day well, I think for me, there's like three reasons for me mostly. I come from a law enforcement family. Right? Mm -hmm. my, my dad was a cop. He was a narcotics detective. He helped write Megan's Law and implement it in New Jersey. And uh, so I grew up around that. And um, <clears> the <throat> second thing, I, I was a Boy Scout and always, for whatever reason, thought, hey, medicine seemed cool. Dumb idea at the time, but I was eight years old. <laughs> right? <laughs> um, and then I, uh, I actually, a friend of mine when I was 13 died, and that was kind of like, the pushing point to want to like not allow that to happen anymore. Do you, do you mind me asking what he, what he died from? So he uh, fell through a roof in uh, the town I grew up in, in Woodbridge, New Jersey. And uh, there was a party spot at the, uh, the, there was a toilet factory in town and you could climb the roof because the pipes to access and like whatnot. You just climb it and everybody hung out, drank there, whatever. I like how in Jersey, a party spot is actually a toilet factory. <laughs> toilet factory. Well, shocked. it's a trashy state. I'm shocked. So it just, yeah. <laughs> it all shocked makes sense. Did, did he die inside the toilet factory? Actually, he fell through the skylight. Okay. And it was a 30 foot drop. Oof. And but inside the toilet factory. Yeah. I'd also like to point out the delineation that's south of the Driscoll Bridge. There's yeah, a yeah. difference. Yeah. There is a difference. So, so Ross. <laughs> yeah. Taylor hammer pork roll. What's that? Do you call it Taylor hammer pork roll? Pork roll. <sighs> why? Why? What, what's what's the disappointment? I don't even know what either one of those words mean. I'm it's, not. It's delicious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's amazing. But it's Taylor ham. Uh, yeah. So I'm, I, I'm not. 
Look, I, I was a part-time resident of Jersey for many years um, out in Long Beach Island, but that's about well, it. Well, that's, that's probably it. why. Yes, yeah. you know, yes, dude. LBI, we, South. We just it's all and the sandwiches, like dude, that's Civil I, War in DB, New Jersey, right now. Yeah, ham, egg, and cheese. So with with by the way, with the Wawa sandwich, the same way. Yes. Where it's like I will always give that respect because as a trash kid growing up, like you know. 18 through 20s, like doing doing all of that shit. Yeah. That sandwich was still the jam, and you could get it at any time oh, of the night. Yeah. And it was it's the best. Now, is it the best sandwich overall? No, Absolutely Dan is not. correct in that point. But when you're drunk as shit, it it's is. the I mean, best. Yeah. There's yeah, there's yeah. better yeah. gas station sandwiches than that. Well, yeah, it was Sheets Wawa or Sheets. Sheets, Sheets is way Sheets better. Sheets is pretty good. Sheets is good. Yeah, but there's, there's none in yeah, there's Jersey. None in Jersey. Jersey. Oh, they correct. haven't made it up there yet. They're no, they're only moving south. You got Quick Jersey. You got Quick Check, and you got Wawa. Yeah, and up until like what five years ago there was no wawa in north jersey wawa was strictly they got one in carney yeah, yeah and that saying, was like the newest five one. Yeah. five years ago mm -hmm. that's when they finally started to make mm -hmm. their way up north in new jersey besides that it was quick check quick check was northern new jersey and wawa was southern new jersey yeah and wow. that's a big deal there everybody loves the yes. fucking wawa so Absolutely. that's why i bring it up um now your buddy who passed away in the toilet factory yeah that is really hard to say with a straight face. Um, it's a tragic story, but you realize that that goes on the death certificate of where you died. And it's... So I, I don't think he was technically pronounced dead until the hospital. Thank God. Uh, Thank so, God. So the you have to give that death certificate to everyone. Well, we also go back okay. to nobody ever dies in an ambulance. Yeah, nobody ever so, dies in an ambulance. No. <laughs> why, why is that? They, they die on scene or at the hospital. Yeah, so then the ambulance becomes a crime scene. Yeah, you can't oh, move the ambulance. Yeah. No shit. I didn't know Until that. Until the medical yeah. examiner comes to retrieve the body. <laughs> yeah. So nobody ever dies in an ambulance. Ambulances have been flatbedded to medical examiner's offices, considered a crime scene because... No way. Some surly paramedic who shan't be named decided to <laughs> pronounce a body. Said, that fuck this, I don't that care, was... and pronounce him in the back of an ambulance. Wow. Yeah, so the, the person was deceased for whatever reasons in Hudson County. Made it into Essex County. Okay. Pronounced on the side of Route 21. <laughs> and uh, and well, they got to take the whole, whole fucking thing, thing in. Yes, yeah. they do. Oh, or, God. or they have to wait for the medical examiner to actually come out. Or you do a release um, on scene, which they're probably not going to do. Because, well, let me ask you yeah. this. If you're working, though, that night and you're inside of that ambulance, you're probably off the rest of the night at that point, yeah, right? Yeah, but you're, you're not back at the station, so... Okay. You're sitting Yeah, the you're hanging the out with that ambulance because uh, you can't exactly leave the dead guy by themselves. <laughs> that, that's <laughs> how the walking dead happens. What's he going to yeah, do? he's not he's going fine. He's not going anywhere. I'm not saying he's going to try and get up and run away. I'm just saying, like, <laughs> chain of custody, there's a bit of an issue there. Just carry some portable ring cameras or something. Put a couple of cameras on them and then go down to the bar, get fucked up. <laughs> yeah. Just make sure you keep your Weekend phone on. Weekend at Bernie's them, dude. Yeah. And have Hell a good yeah. time. Throw some sunnies Park on Tavern, them and get you know? out there. I was, yeah, that's exactly <laughs> what I was thinking. Uh, so why did you get out of it and move to Texas? Well, you've, you've been in New Jersey, right? Yes. Yeah. That was it. Oh, so was Jersey not the job itself? So, yeah. So I, um, So my partner from 2013, shout out to uh, Kyle Hoagland. He moved out here in 2013. That motherfucker, two days before moving, hey, I'm moving to uh, Flower Mountain, Texas. And I started visiting him once I graduated medical school, which I'm surprised I graduated because I'm stupid. And uh, <laughs> Yeah, you're welcome for helping you out through that, yeah. asshole. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, so we were partners when I was in medical school, and I don't know how many times I'm unconscious because I'm in full-time medical school, working medical center full-time, three other jobs, and uh, I'm asleep in, in the ambulance, and all of a sudden, hey, uh, right side of the road, there's somebody who can't breathe. Yeah, okay, cool. Right, he also right. has vehicle-induced narcolepsy. Right. If he's in a passenger yeah. seat and you're driving. You're out. Oh, oh, out. Yeah, you're the, you're yeah, the guy right. who's out. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Worse on road trips. Well, no, I mean, if I'm driving, I'm good. Okay. If I'm not driving, it's the, the, you're, you're gone. Yeah. 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 Uh, bombs away. So what are you going to do here in Texas? So uh, I just got hired as a detention officer in the county I live in. So I'm going to work in the jails and then hopefully go What's that? Have you worked in a jail before? No. Okay. Because no. it doesn't seem like it's that pleasant either. Well, I mean, it's better than the ambulance. <laughs> oh, trust me. Yeah. It's better than the ambulance. Is so, it? So yeah. going, but, but jails, it's all dudes, right? Are you working in a women's prison? I have no idea. I find out this week. Are you hoping for a women's, women's prison? No. <laughs> I don't I, think anybody hopes for that. Really? Yeah, so, Why would you? Favors? No. You want a Snickers bar? Cool. I'm gonna need, you got to throw me a beach. <laughs> I'm going to need a beach. Well, so, mm. That's so, not exactly how you want to get jammed up. Yeah. If you're going to get jammed up, get jammed up for doing something really cool yeah. and interesting. 
getting a blowjob in the fucking back. That's not a great way to go out. No, but you, it's you wanna, plus, I don't it's want Metheny Lynn from the trailer park blowing me. I don't no, no, know no. I'm, but I'm you get been. to pick and choose at that point. If you work there, you know the entire lineup. You know who's inside that place that night. Like, <laughs> you know, you, I'm sure you have your favorites. You'll be able to check the boxes. Well, well so the fun fact. To walk in, you, you get an extra meal today. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the agency that I got hired by, they do both law enforcement patrol and they cover the county jails. And I was talking to the background investigator. He said, yeah, we send so many people to the police academy from the jails because it's just easier to do an internal hire than hire somebody new. Mm. And, uh, but I know for a fact that there's going to be X amount of people in an IA investigation right now losing their jobs from the jail. I'm like, oh, okay, well. God. You could be the next guy. You could be uh, Pablo Schreiber from... uh, from Orange is the New Black. Yeah, know. dude. Yeah. Well, I asked. I'm That's like, Liam hey, Shriver's half brother, by the yeah. way. Yeah, <laughs> is it really? Nobody knows that. Yeah, <laughs> the weird. better yes. half. Sure. He's the Very better weird. half. Yeah. The more we know. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so I said, well, "What did they do?" So I know not to do that because I'm not trying to trying to lose this job and go back to working on an ambulance. They're like, "Oh yeah, prostitution." Really? That happens uh, all the time. That happened yeah. at uh, Fort Jackson in basic training a couple years ago. There was a couple of, um, I think it was a first sergeant, a couple or not a first. There was a couple of. Uh, sergeant's first class uh-huh. that were basically running like dudes are running trains on girls and shit. They basically the women that came through basic training became prostitutes for them somehow. Like the ones that wanted to. Were they paying them? Uh, well, sure, that's how that works. But I don't know. Yeah, well, you wonder. I, I don't like, know. I'm what, sure there's a difference in percentage. I don't know. Yeah, get, yeah. Depending on where you are. Yeah. I have no idea what the all the internal details because it's a DOD investigation. And they don't really share things with the press that often. Uh, but I know people that were involved, not directly involved, but I know people who were there at the time when that whole thing went down. And it was uh, very bizarre. So it's not like that crazy that something like that would happen. So the percentage that the girls take in, is that also based on the uh, consumer price index? I don't know. Okay. Hey, I think it should be factored in. I yeah, think he should be factored in. Trump would factor that in if he gets uh, reelected. I have a good feeling. Um, what's some of your craziest stories there? Uh, let's see, ones that we can actually talk about. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. So I want to yeah. I want to make this perfectly clear before this goes out to millions and millions of people because yeah. some a couple episodes have been pulled. One recently, you know who you are. <laughs> <laughs> that was a you great guys listen to the show. It was, a, it was an awesome oh, yeah. episode, but. Yeah, we got a call, what was it, four or five days later? Take it down, take it down, I'm going to get fired. See, without yeah. violating anyone's... Uh, I'm not going to yeah. say who it was, so, you can guess for yourself. I'll, I'll preface this, that if we tell this story, the names are fake, don't even try it. You, don't want, you won't know anything identifiable about okay. them, because Definitely the we're people not getting we used to work with will we'll know, though. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we're not yeah, getting jammed up fire away. shit. What, seizure check? Oh, seizure check, yes. Caesar chick. Seizure. Seizure. Oh, seizure. Yeah. I thought you were talking about the salad. No, I was like, she, what did she do to the salad? No, the season, no, 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 no. She, yeah. uh, she had seizures a lot. All um, the time. Okay. And we were her designated EMTs. Uh, luck of the draw. So she went. Strictly luck of the draw. Why is that lucky? Well, they're being sarcastic. He means it it was a coincidence that they just always showed up when she had a seizure. Bingo. Dance track. (laughs) Jesus Christ. Can you guys learn fucking English and how to use it, please? Or am I going to have to translate between you New Jersey motherfuckers and normal human beings? Holy shit. Our grammar is as trashy as our state is. God damn it, dude. But at least Dan's following. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I speak full on retard, so you guys can continue as is and I'll do what I can to translate. I thought we were going to have to bring our own translator. So, Dan. Anyway, yeah, this girl had very, very bad seizures. Uh, she was also a college student at one of the... Hot? Yes hot? or no? Yes or no? Yes. Oh, yeah. Okay. Changes That's the story. Okay. That changes things, obviously. It does. Yeah. It does, yeah. <laughs> it's gorgeous. Because, yeah. look, we get told stories by, like, Eric Tanzian all the time. Usually, it's, like, some 400-pounder coming at you with a meat cleaver, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, no, no. It's, no. it's usually never hot-ass yeah, college. Yeah, That's not foreplay? Very rarely. Well, it is <laughs> in North Carolina, apparently. Anyways, yeah. huh. continue the story. So... Um, again, strictly by happenstance, uh, we were always the closest unit because we dispatched ambulances by closest unit. Mm-hmm. So they GPS track all the buses, and so we just happen to always be there. I shit you not, it was a coincidence. Um, so the first time that we encountered her, um, we actually met her parents. I'm just imagining this woman thinking these two EMTs are stalking her. Every time I have a seizure, well, no, these, she's, <laughs> these two <laughs> assholes show up. Well, no, she stalked us. Yeah, she wound up stalking yeah. us later on. So, so, oh, keep going. Really? Yeah. 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 Oh, not great. really, not actual stalking. Well, who but, runs up to an ambulance at three in the morning looking to figure out who the hell is in it and they're not an ambulance driver? Very true. Yeah. Um, was she about to have a seizure? Well, no, yeah, so she was not. Her dog was barking, her little dog. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She <laughs> was just very happy that it was us. Yeah. Um, so 
this chick, multiple seizures, we deal with her all the time. So we know exactly what her history is, everything. She never wanted to go to the hospital. All right, fine. That's your right. Um, you're probably going to seize again, but that's not here nor there. Sure. Um, <laughs> but if you don't want to go to the hospital, we explain everything to you. You sign a refusal mm -hmm. of medical uh, attention and that's it. Um, but it also took her a very long time to come out of her seizures. Her post ictal state was fairly long. Like how so long? when you say long, yeah, how long? Uh, she was like what, 15 like, minutes. Yeah, 15 oh, shit. Wow, really? yeah. 15 minutes in a post ictal state. Yeah. Wow. Uh, yeah, which is. That's a long time. Yeah. Exactly. Um, mm -hmm. But she lived far away. So she's like, oh, this yeah. is the hospital I used. And I'm like, as much as I'd love to yeah, take Yeah, her family's from South Jersey. Okay. And she's going to school up in North Jersey. So now everyone in the dorm room is freaking out and everything like that. We're just like, yeah, okay, we know it's fine. <laughs> like, yeah. We know she's going to come out of it. We know it's going to take a while. It's fine. Um, and this is, oh, shit, we dealt with her like, what, five times? Yeah. Something like yeah. that. Yeah. Like, it, it was first name exorbitant basis amount thing. of times like, that we're dealing out. with this girl. Oh, it's, oh okay. Yeah, it's homegirl, yeah. She'll, she'll be fine. Give us right. three but minutes. But she's I'll hot right and you guys don't mind. Not at all. Not at Not all. At gotcha. Not to mention... Very, not, very nice girl. Like, actually yeah. very nice Were girl. her parents rich? I mean, you should have tried to play where you could become her concierge EMT. Well, yeah. So, Just fuck. buy this $500,000 vehicle, and we'll drive it around behind you all the time for the rest of the fucking year. Yeah, fuck me. Hindsight is So before we get one. further with guy. this, let me, let me ask you this. You, you, you both seem single. Yes. Yeah, but weird. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> never would have guessed that in a million years. <laughs> if she was into you, and she, if she was having seizures all the time. Is there a better person to marry in this world than a fucking EMT? Yeah, doctor. <laughs> Specifically a neurologist. True. Yeah. Yeah, because <laughs> yeah, again, go. <laughs> That's the only thing I'm going to do is drive you to the hospital with we're, the neurologist. We're, we're an over-glorified <laughs> like, Uber service at the end of the day. We just take your blood pressure and your, and your pulse rate. Yeah, it's like, yeah, come on, man. Let's go to the Oh, we have a bed in our truck. That's about it, That's too. fucking hilarious. So what happened? So... It's like three in the morning. We're at a Hess fueling up. Uh -huh. We're just minding our own business. And all of a sudden, this, this tiny chick starts beelining it towards us. Now, meanwhile, whenever somebody approaches the ambulance, you just assume it's going to turn into, I want to go to the hospital. My, my chest, chest hurts. hurts. Right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's some bullshit. It's like, I just don't want to deal with you. My at, chest at hurts every single day. You know what I do? More drugs. Yeah. <laughs> See, now that's, that's true. I'm a goddamn American. Speed. Yeah. Jesus Christ, get your shit together. Baby. <laughs> so is it is it the girl that beelines to you? Oh, oh yeah, it's yes. a seizure chick. Okay. So she like beelines it to us, hops on the side skirt of the door, and is like, "Oh my God, I was hoping it was you too." And I'm like, we're just look, and we're just looking at each other, we're like. Is this something we want to get fired for? <laughs> so, <laughs> oh, so yes. you, were, you were talking about your, your first instinct there was to uh, whether or not you should, uh, you know, maybe Eiffel Tower this woman. Yes. In the Free streets. Trips to Paris with us. You Paris know? is a lovely place. Yeah. So what was the what what, what ended up happening here? So we, we, we did not take her to Paris. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so we, we I mean, with Are there her. cameras in the MT? No. no. So just throw her in the back. Yeah, um, there you go. You, could, you guys sort of railed around the back. Let's just say that that was moved. not uncommon where we worked. Yeah. Not uncommon. I bet that smells so, great. What <laughs> prevented you from having sex with this beautiful woman with epilepsy? <laughs> <laughs> so, fun fact is I got accepted to that school after I graduated paramedic school. Which college is it? Rutgers? Uh, is it Rutgers? Uh, <laughs> Rutgers? No, it's not it's Princeton? Uh, not, not, it's in not Hudson Rutgers. County. I'll put it okay. to you like that. Okay. Yeah. And uh, so I call him up once I got the acceptance letter. I said, hey. You're never going to guess this. I'm actually going to go back to college. And he's like, oh, yeah, where? And I tell him where. And he said, seizure chick? I'm like, well, I'm bringing a strobe light when it happens. <laughs> See how long I can hang on for. <laughs> yeah. Did you have sex with her at all? I never had a class with her, unfortunately. Really? Yeah, Very I was disappointing. Hoping. No shit. So where it's, is she now? I was actually pulling for him. What happened to her? She Either she stopped having seizures or she left the college because... <laughs> We, I'd imagine she left. Yeah, I, I can't yeah, imagine going, she just cure, got cured all of a sudden. Yeah, me I don't neither. think, maybe I don't think the me. epilepsy maybe. went away, but maybe they got her dosages right. Got it. What, what's, the, what's the protocol in something like that? Do, do, do people date a lot of uh, their oh, patients no, and no. things like big, that? Big no, no. Yeah, that's, yeah. That's, that's really no. Why? It's, uh, so your healthcare information is protected federally. It's called HIPAA. HIPAA, yeah. 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 So um, us, like if I went out and said like, oh yeah, so I, I hypothetically speaking, because there was nurses in our county that got jammed up for this, George Clooney gets into a motorcycle wreck and they just access his chart like, no, it's not George Clooney, right? And that information got leaked. Well, that whole floor lost their job. No and shit. Yeah. So if I was like, yeah, you know, I, uh, 
I saw this really. It's kind of no different than like cops have gotten in trouble for it in the past. Like they'll run somebody's information, like a hot chick's info information on their yeah, computer. Yeah. And then, uh, I mean, it happened in New Jersey a couple times. And yeah. the cop these kind of like let's, show Let's up. say you're off duty, though. Now, these days, the, well, he's talking about actually using your access as uh, a, an officer or an EMT to right. find right. out who right, they right. are. But like, if had something, you met that chick in a bar, uh, yeah. totally whole different if something, circumstance. If yeah. something happens, every interaction was always technically professional. Yeah. So. Uh, well, even, oh, even oh, can't. Gotcha, gotcha, Professional's gotcha. a loose term with us. Even then, also, yeah. <laughs> even then if, a, if, if a woman or a man, in your case, uh, gotcha, were thanks. to yeah. offer you their number after you did something, there's nothing wrong with taking that number and calling them later, right? I mean, what? You, you haven't solicited them for anything. You haven't compromised their information or your access to it. I don't see why that would be a problem. I think it more gets into a gray area, not so much with legality, mm. but more of company policy at mm. that point. I see. Yeah. Um, because let's face it, uh, people are crazy. Mm. So if something went south and they decided to contact my employer. Say, con- it, say it into that. Yeah, thing. yeah, there oh, Sorry. Um, if something went south and then they decided to contact my employer mm-hmm. and say, hey, this is how we met. And, uh, you know, that could, that goes down a slippery slope. Gotcha. Cause I, look, we, as like civilians, normal people have this romantic notion of like, oh man, you run into the house, like either a firefighter or a cop or something like that, save their lives. And then you end up getting married you know, dating, whatever. I'm not saying it hasn't happened before. I'm like, I'm sure it has, right. But it's just kind of a dicey situation with that. Okay. It, it, now it makes more sense. Yeah. But if, if you ran into her, so you, ne- you never ran into her off duty or anything, not on campus? No. Not one I single time. No. I was, I was looking. I'm not even going to lie. I was looking. So you, <laughs> uh, yeah. so you did stalk her, is what you're saying. Yeah. Uh, Passively. Some light, light stalking. Yeah. Passively. Yeah. You were light fine stalking. with the 15 minute. I mean, like I was, statutorily in New Jersey, it's three or more events. So. Yeah, I can't, I can't exactly I was say it was class, I was going out of my way to find her. Like, I was going to my classes because I hated that school. But, um, yeah, like, I was going to my class. If I ran into her, I would be like, yeah, let's go grab coffee or, you know. Yeah, yeah, of course. Go back to your dorm, which I've already been inside. Just not. Yeah. Not just uniform not. Today. Just yeah. not while you were in the room. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's talking about her specific dorm, by the way, because he stalked her. You, de- you definitely and stalked her. And you definitely her. just admitted to it. In front of a live audience. I'm sure there, there's a hair doll somewhere. You've got a, at least one of her toenails, like clippings, like <laughs> something you own and that is on your person to this day, I bet. Uh, kids, you, you guys have uh, watched the show and listened to it for a long time. You know we got some sponsors to pay for this shit wagon to be on the air. First and foremost is ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros. Look, we get, we get two first responders on the show. You get 30% off if you're a first responder, a uh, member of the military, a teacher, or work in the government. Before we went on air, one of you guys bought the ghost bed. Oh, yeah, I did. Yeah, greatest yeah. goddamn thing ever, right? Oh, fuck, yeah. So I, I have horrible sleep problems because I work night shift. Yeah. And uh, once I bought the ghost bed, they all went away. Right? It's, it's crazy, yeah. right? And like we sell these on the show, and you're probably like, Ross is full of shit. No, well, I literally bought it because of the show. Right, but yeah, it, but you were, was there great. any part of you that was like, he's got to be lying at this no. point? No. It's great. Yeah. It's it's, I would phenomenal. not. We wouldn't sell something of that price range on this show if it wasn't the fucking best, uh, for real. So th- that that made me happy when you came in and you were like, yo, the fucking ghost is shit, dude. It is. Um, because I would feel terrible if somebody spent that much money and, and it, it was an awful experience. Well, of course, I use a promo code, so. Uh, obviously, Fuck so yeah. do we. You know we use our own promo all codes on all this shit. Yeah. Everything we do. Killcliff CBD you? caught me. Killcliff CBD caught me. Did they? Yes. What they say about it? Uh, yeah. so they didn't say anything. Like it was a customer service thing. I don't where, understand how that's wrong. But, it's well, not wrong. It's not wrong. But we're the hosts of the show, so it's like they're the ones that gave you the promo code. They are. <laughs> but tread lightly. Uh, it, so I, you're telling me all of your millions of viewers can use it, but you can't? Yeah, I guess as the host of the show, maybe they thought we were jacking up the number. I don't know what it was, but I just I drink so much of it. So does Dan. That uh, the next time I typed in my thing, it just said, oh, sir, your, your promo code is no good here. <laughs> You're the host of the show. Uh, we've already given you a discount. And I was like, oh, well, fuck, man. And now I feel bad because I'm sure all their people in customer service are laughing at me. Now. <laughs> they are. It's actually a better discount, probably, right? Uh, I think, think it's the same. I think oh, it's the same. The same? Yeah, I'm, I'm, You're just getting it auto applied now. That's it. So they yeah. can track it differently. Right? Exactly. Yeah, yeah, it's not a big deal. And they're like, Relax. that fucking asshole is ordering like 30 cases a month. Well, Ghostbed doesn't care. They don't care at all. And I've, I've yeah. used it numerous times for relatives and all that shit. So yeah. uh, it's great. Go to ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros today. Uh, right now, during the month of October, it is uh, 30% off bundle packages. So the adjustable base, the sheets, 
pillows, the mattresses, all of that can be bundled together and you can use it with a 36 month pay as you go program, no interest at ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros. And since I was talking about Killcliffe CBD, we'll give them the, we'll give them the shout out. Uh, KillcliffeCBD.com, promo code Drinking Bros, 20% off and free shipping. Uh, the, the new strawberry flavor is the best. Gigantic fan of that. I like it. I'm still a fan of the orange. Well, um, grape is still my favorite. I kind of want to mix all of them together and see what that does. It's called a suicide. Uh, well, when you're a child, yeah. Roller rink. Yeah. Roller rink suicide. I've dude. never, I think I've actually been in one roller rink, but I've never been in one to, to skate. I think I was there in my late teens to buy drugs. <laughs> um, Fair enough. Yeah. I've tried to skate. It didn't work out. And uh, honestly, come on, man. It's not exactly the manliest thing to do. Let's it's be real. That, well, you know, I was a skate referee in college for. That's for, a ridiculous uh, thing to be. I needed cash, and it was the only place that's. 20 that, bucks is 20 bucks, Ross. The it, only it was. So to, to work there, <laughs> if you work five days, they paid you, it was a $100 bonus, and I needed to make rent that month. So I worked at United Skates of America in Columbus, Ohio. And uh, yeah, dude, I was a skate referee with the whistle well. and yeah. all that shit, dude. Yeah. I, I, that's you wear the zebra stripes the whole night? Yes, everything. And you think about it, and you're like, ah, oh, big deal. I can roller skate. It's mm -hmm. fun, right? No big deal. Eight hours of roller skating, exhausted. I mean, just every day you're fucking smoked for roller skating for eight hours straight. Mm -hmm. Like, it's, it's awful. I well, can see that. Uh, you will need some CBD from KillcliffCBD.com. Yeah. Speaking of which, you guys are first responders. Uh, there, you will not piss hot. There is no THC in KillcliffCBD.com. Uh, um, so you can buy as many and as much as you want and drink it to your delight. You will not piss hot on drug tests. Go to KillcliffCBD.com today. My, mine's great, but I like the strawberry a lot. Uh, mango, orange, kush, and uh, uh, mango is the last one. Mango, orange, kush, grape, and uh, strawberry days. Yes, uh, and we drink it with vodka. Mm. We've been drinking, that has been our summertime drink, it's which has now moved too. into the fall. It's fantastic, um, and that being said, when you wake up in the morning, you're gonna need liquidiv.com to pop back to life. You've, you're drinking it now. Yep. Every morning on Ross Patterson Revolution, that's how I start my morning. Uh, it's Black Rifle Coffee, and then I drink one of the, the big tall boys mm. of uh, either a Smart Water or whatever yeah. Jennifer Anderson's pushing. They're, they're not a sponsor, but Liquid IV is, and mm. I put the Liquid IV in it, double hydrates me real quick, and then uh, I'm good to go for the rest of the day. Um, I did what, the same thing this morning. Black yeah. Rifle Coffee and Liquid IV. It's the yeah. same, dude. Uh, uh, look, the bag is here. Everybody who comes to the studio always takes these fucking things, too. Uh, this is the hydration multiplier. This is the new one. Uh, let's get a vitamin C, vitamin D, zinc, and uh, Wellmune. I don't know what Wellmune is, but I know this, this tastes amazing. And uh, boom, dude. Put one in a cup. It's the same as drinking three glasses of water immediately. Go to liquidiv.com, promo code Drinking Bros, 25% off there. <laughs> This, you'll get hooked on. You'll be drinking that every day, too, man. Um, I go through my shit because I, I don't like plain water. <clears throat> I'm one of those. I just. Yeah. It's all right. You know? Nobody wants to drink plain water. If I can put something in it, I'm going to have something mm -hmm. in it. Um, you're wearing an Ohio State hat. Ohio State is, is back. Am. By the time this episode airs on Monday, we will have won and, and beaten the spread by 26, I think. Uh, yeah, because Ohio State is the only uh, college in the Big Ten right now that yeah. has any shot of doing anything. Correct. Uh, Obviously, I, Wisconsin's a dark horse, though I will say. Like I, I think something happened in their quarterback. Yeah, they got a weird quarterback situation, and uh, Penn State also has weird situations going. Their on. running back is out for the season, and their coach. What happened to the coach? Didn't he get fired or resign or something? No, I think Franklin's still there. Who Who was the guy that resigned? I think Franklin's still there. It was. Uh... Was it Bill O'Brien before him? Resignation. No, yeah. Somebody just this week. Oh, really? Oh, it was the basketball coach, Pat basketball Chambers. Basketball coach, correct. Oh, sorry. Yes, Excuse yes, me. yes, yes, yes. I just but, saw the headline this morning. Uh, Big Ten is back. I'm amped about that. Um, what I'm not amped about is, since we're, we'll keep it jersey themed here. All right. I was not amped <clears throat> that Rutgers joined the Big Ten. None they're, of us they're, were. They're yeah, horrific. none of us really were. Yeah, I, I'm curious, from a jersey perspective, what was that for you guys up there? Like, uh, the only thing that that meant to at least me anyway is that Rutgers is going to get destroyed um, pretty much on every game it is that they play well Greg Shiano's back by I the saw way. them beat he Howard is. a few years ago the what? Yeah. I saw them beat Howard a few years ago <laughs> <laughs> Howard is the, the the black powerhouse of the south yes um, I'm pretty sure though I mean look the talent is not there right it depends like do you think it, an eight an eight a Texas team like a, a high school team could beat a team like Howard or something? Because I know there, there are definitely D2 schools that some of the Texas and Florida high school teams could absolutely destroy. Because they, they have edge rushers 
in high school that are fucking 280 to 300 pounds that are still running that fucking mid 440. You know what I mean? High school like football those kids here come from. I was just going to say, yeah. Texas, yeah. that's kids literally come from you somewhere. fucking breed football yeah. players. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, it is totally different than New Jersey. It yeah, is. so I bet, I bet people used to make that argument. Remember the, uh, what was it, the 2000 one Miami Hurricanes were like, oh, I think they could beat the Dolphins, man. Like, no, they couldn't. Yeah. For sure. But I think there might be a high school team in Texas or Southern Florida that probably could beat some of the shittier D2 colleges. Probably. Maybe. Maybe. Uh, look, Rutgers has gone through some shit, though. Um, and they brought back Shiano. They did. Uh, so he's there. Uh, fake Dan, by the way. So we'll, we'll find out because this, by the time this airs, your prediction may or may not have come true. Uh, on Drinking Bros Sports this week, he actually took Rutgers plus the points against Michigan State. It, it was 13 and a half? 13 and a half, yeah. Yeah, 13 and a half. Which yeah. is the, and you took Rutgers to win? No, no, no. 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 With, oh, with, oh. with the points. Took him with the points. Oh, okay. So they're Michigan getting 13 and a half year. points. Just saying, yeah. God, Mel Tucker's damn. a bad coach. Yeah, so because they, they lost their coach in the offseason. Yeah. So Michigan State's got a new coach. We'll see what Shiano does. He doesn't have his recruits in there. How is Rutgers as a party school in New Jersey? <laughs> Fucking phenomenal until they destroy the grease trucks. Mm. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah, they took away the grease trucks. Well, they didn't necessarily take them away. They dispersed uh. them throughout New Brunswick. But uh, it was great because you go down Fraternity Row, get hammered. Yeah. You'd call them up and say, yeah, you know, I want a couple fat nights, a couple fat beaches, whatever the case is, and pick up a 30 rack of Coors Light. Yeah, and you just pay them in cash, and they show up with everything. Don't give a shit, and you know, seven dollars a sandwich for something this fucking big—it's gonna fill you up. Yeah, it was the best drunk food there is. <sighs> Phenomenal. So Jersey's got some great food. Mm. Hell yeah, um, we do, and it's it's close enough that the cheesesteaks are decent as well. Depends on where you go, but yeah, absolutely. All right, so let's let's fire away here. Best pizza place in New Jersey? Ooh, Pino's. Oh, yeah, Pino's in Woodbridge. I'll fight. I'll fight anybody over that. Shameless plug for me. Uh, my hometown place, La Bella Roma. It's actually run by a uh, kid I went to high school with. Okay. Um, let me let me let me notch. set the rules here. Whenever somebody says, "Hey, what's the best X you've ever been to?" or "What's your what's your favorite <laughs> place in New York?" You can't go to a small town that you grew up in and say that one because nobody has any right. basis comparison. For that. Well, man, look, nope. maybe skip you, that one. Nobody you, else has ever honestly, been Raza, which has actually been. <laughs> ranked as like one of the best pizzas around it's in jersey city okay um, what, what kind of pizza is it uh typical margarita coal okay. fired oven brick pizza and what about the one you said pinos pinos yeah they're buffalo chicken slice it's phenomenal buffalo um, chicken slice yeah. all right so it's like a standard they, pizza or is it like new york style what is it yeah, yeah standard pizza deep dish mm. good yeah, for, oh, not deep chicken dish outlets cut up but they've used it, so they ended up having to move from one building to another block away and they just took the same oven they've mm. been using for I don't know, even know how long. Just moved it over and continued making the pizza. It's phenomenal. Yeah, that's a big deal with the ovens, mm -hmm. by the way. Uh, people yeah. do that all the time. So Lombardi's in New York City, uh, it's Spring and Mott. They're actually credited. They have like a little sign. They were the first pizzeria, mm -hmm. uh, supposedly in uh, all of the United States of America. Hmm. Um, Coal-fired brick oven, um, you know, runs at like 1,200 degrees or something ridiculous. Yeah. And cooks a pizza in like 30 seconds. Uh, probably one of the best pizzas I've ever had. In your entire life? Hmm. Uh, yeah. Okay, so for Jersey, for me, because I'm, I'm... But I'm, that's in New York City, so it's exactly. in Exactly. Yeah, that doesn't, that doesn't right. count. No, but, you, can, uh, you can throw a rock in any direction and hit a good pizza in that city. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, fuck, even Brooklyn now has mm -hmm. got like amazing pizza. Oh, where you're it's just all like, the fucking hipsters over there. It man. is, man. And like the last time I was there, I had a dinner meeting there, and uh, we, we, we got one of those brick oven pizzas Cali's? there. And it mm, came, yeah, right. we had maybe four or five beers, like nothing crazy. It wasn't, it wasn't a crazy meal, and it was like $118. And I was like, motherfucker, how much is that pizza? That pizza was like $45. Yeah, and so same like, thing with Lombardi's. They're on the pricey side. Are they? It, it's, it's good shit, don't get me wrong. Right. <laughs> uh, but it's, it's definitely on the pricey side. Gotcha. So, it's not your typical like little you know, hometown pizzeria or like corner buy it by the slice type of place. Like it's the more upscales like everyone's wearing all the waiters are wearing white shirts and you know black pants and it's kind of formal but you can walk in there in jeans and t-shirts fine uh, okay mm. uh since i'm from lbi i, I gotta go pan zones pan zones oh, is my favorite yes. pizza place there so. right on the island yep absolutely uh, that's that's my jam grew up going there what about uh uh cheese sticks if you already get a cheese steak in new jersey where do you go because people don't want to make that drive to philadelphia like they don't want to make my it my go-to is Midway Steaks and Sleaside Heights. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Midway's, Midway's pretty top-notch. Yeah, because I'll get drunk as shit and it's 3 in the morning, just bebopping my way down the boardwalk. Yeah. Plain cheesesteak with hot sauce. It's my go-to every time. Yeah, I'm not going to lie. Midway Steaks is really good. Okay. Are you one of those Jersey kids that's never going to leave? 
Probably. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he answered before you did. At, at least not until I retire. I mean, I'm, I'm kind of stuck there for the next at least 27 yeah, years. Yeah, try like 40. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> I can retire when I'm 55. So, okay. um, at least with the pension that we have now, which hopefully it's still there. Um, but won't, yeah, won't Trump. Be. Trump, brother, you got to vote for Trump. So I said, hopefully it's still going to be there. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm going to be in New Jersey until I retire. Yeah. yeah. That was one of the things that uh, was always fascinating growing up. Like either you were lifers there or you were getting out of New York to go there. Um, nobody was voluntarily <laughs> moving to New Jersey. Yeah, um, fair enough. But if, if you grew up there and it's in your blood, you can't leave. You can't get out of it. Yeah. Um, no, it's a, a lot of friends, a lot of, you know, all family, friends and everything like that. I'm very established in New Jersey. Okay. Um, so, I mean, he took a big leap moving out here. Um, same thing. He's got all family, friends, and everything like that back in back in New Jersey. Well, my dad moved out here with me. True. Oh, yeah. he did. Okay. Yeah. But right. but still. Are you guys I mean, roommates? Yeah. Do you guys bang checks together and shit? <laughs> <laughs> yes or no, motherfucker. <laughs> we, we don't. But but my dad does pull checks closer to my age than his. Does he really? How old oh, is yeah. he? He's sixty. Uh, Sixty one. Yeah. Slanging that loaf. What kind of loaf yeah. has he got on him? <laughs> fucking dad dope, dick's seen your dad's dick come on dad dick yeah you ever seen your dad's dick no when's the last time i've <laughs> never seen it how old were you you never <laughs> seen your dad's dick no never so when he dies and you take him on the ambulance yeah, you're gonna uh, get a little no, peek, he's get a little peak right season there. he already said don't don't fucking bring me back let him go he has ms and the fact that he's still walking is fucking phenomenal no we're not talking about his ms we're talking about are you gonna take a peek at his dick yeah no. you're gonna see that dick no. before he just dies just one time you want to know not at all no <laughs> you should know where you came I, from you, you shouldn't <laughs> you shouldn't kneel in front of it like king arthur it's like this Blue is Mountain State. this like, is where i came from yeah yeah. This is where I came from. Show a little fucking respect to dad dicks, all right? <laughs> yeah, you call, I tell you what, you call me when he dies, I'll pull his pants down and I'll sing Springsteen over his dick. <laughs> my hometown. So my dad my used to do security for Springsteen. Hometown. Did he really? <laughs> yeah, What's, I met Springsteen when I was like nine years old. What's his story? Dan's always got the funniest fucking, uh, you've got the best way to describe Springsteen. He, I, I don't want to do it. Do it. He's just a piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> He's like he he at least uh, John Mellencamp had the good sense to go away after all that fucking Americana. Look how hard I walk on a coal mine. Bullshit went away. Like get the fuck out, dude. You've never worked a day in your fucking life, <laughs> <laughs> ever. You've been playing the guitar and talking about other people working, but from the first person for forty years. He's <laughs> a fucking cunt. He's a. <laughs> I hate that Dan's guy. hatred of Springsteen always gets me because it's true. You're like, hey, motherfucker, you're worth like nine hundred million dollars, and it's like he's still singing about man when I go wake up on a Jersey but morning. And so I, it's one of those things. Like truck stop I grew up turnpike. listening to him yeah. because parents listened to him right. and everything like Everybody. that. And, yeah. Right. So it's one of those things that it's. But every single time you hear him, like I will sing or know the words to almost all of his songs just because again i grew up listening to him mm. doesn't necessarily mean i agree with his politics right no right, i don't right, have right. to agree with some of these politics Me neither. to appreciate their work however yeah. it's not about his politics it's about that his work is all fabricated now look that's what actors do right, right. yeah of course yeah. but the way he does it the way he takes advantage of people who think that he's some kind of fucking person to look up to then he tries to flex his politics onto that particular crowd <laughs> that he's co-opted and he's never lived that life a day in his life that becomes a problem for me. Yeah. Right? No. So he can get fucked. <laughs> uh, he said he's going to move to Australia if Trump wins. Yeah, I, I will buy your fucking ticket, brother. Yeah. Call me up. Well, drink, so, it, uh, drink it, bros. We'll fund your trip right the fuck out of this guy. And it's country. a one way, so I will put you in first. Yeah, I'll put you in first. It'll be about 15K. We'll yeah. do it. We'll, well do actually, it right but you're Springsteen. You'll probably want to sit and coach and help out with the good people in the last row of the plane. You know, like, <laughs> I, I tell you what, well, I was uh, working was at scarily Dallas. accurate. Yeah. So, so he put out some movie, and he's doing this live performance, and he's talking about his ranch in, I don't know, fucking Arizona. On, it's on Netflix. Yes, yeah, so I'm yes. on this flight, and like, I was like, oh, I'll throw in some Springsteen, whatever. <laughs> I see him like, you're from fucking Asbury Park, New Jersey. Yeah. I don't think there's a fucking cow there no yeah like, what, what, the fuck, what do you nice. know about ranching He's a weird guy how far is uh, asbury park from you guys About an hour okay cool yeah right down the parkway cool uh favorite springsteen song we're gonna go there Darlington county okay you i don't have one really yeah not a springsteen guy i mean i'll listen to him i just don't go out of my way to listen to him okay. i don't know the name yeah. of any of his songs except for i think born in the usa's one right yeah yeah, yeah. but yeah. that's only because the hook is the name of the song that's the only reason i remember it <laughs> i glory days is mine only because of the oh, video glory days. Well, right, but yeah, because yeah. of the video with him uh playing baseball because mm -hmm. it, it actually looked like he could play like throw there's yep. nothing that angers me more <laughs> when an, an actor or a musician goes out and they're 
playing a sports hero and something and they can't actually throw a fucking ball. <laughs> like, oh, like when, like, when, like when, first yeah. Yes, yeah. Fauci. No, like well, first purchase. No, yeah. 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 like when, uh, when John Goodman played Babe Ruth. Yeah. Like, are you yes, fucking yes. kidding me, uh, yeah. dude? John Goodman had to lose weight to play Babe Ruth, <laughs> the fattest baseball player of all time. <laughs> Are you out of your fucking mind casting him? I know they wanted a big name, but Jesus fucking Christ, dude. <laughs> yep. Big name doesn't have to be a big person. No, no. For yeah, fuck's sake. He did have to lose weight for that role. Like, uh, bon Jovi, where you at? Uh, don't know as many of his songs. Not as big of a fan. We'll call it fan as uh, Springsteen. But yeah, no, still. Hometown, Jersey. Jersey you're, a big, you're, you're a Bon Jovi guy. Uh, JBJ. Yes, okay. yes, but again, like not nearly to the level. I don't know all of his songs. Like I know Springsteen songs. Springsteen was in the house growing up, listened to it all the time. Yeah. Um, Jovi, not so much. Okay. What about you? I don't know. Living on a prayer. I, I went to the same high school as Richie Zambora. So. Oh, what was his story? Did, was he pulling on a pussy? In high well, school? his story was that he's 25 years older than this asshole. So <laughs> yeah. who the fuck yeah. knows? Well, here, here's the thing. So like, well, whenever they, somebody they renamed famous, the street address to yes. Richie Zambora way. Oh, that's really so yeah. That's yeah. It. That's so, funny. And, and that's why, like, I bet everybody's still got stories from there because it's probably the same teachers, probably the same shit. And I bet, I bet they caught him eating pussy um, after a, a football game on a Friday night. Probably. Yeah. yeah. So, I, what's the dirt on Zambora? Is he a good guy in real life? For, as far as I know, yeah, I haven't heard anything bad about him. But, okay. I mean, I mean, he's got problems with substance abuse, but don't we all? <laughs> well, I mean, if you're from New Jersey, you, get that person. No. you probably do. No. Yeah, if you're from Jersey, there's a good yeah. shot. Yeah, that yeah. You do. yeah. Having yeah. A, uh, a drug problem isn't necessarily doesn't necessarily make you a bad person. What makes you a bad person is taking three and a half million dollars from the mayor of Moscow and then giving it to your father. <laughs> there it is. He's the vice president of the United States. Hunter Biden. I, whoa, whoa. No, I'm whoa, just whoa. saying if someone were to do something like sure. that. Hypothetically speaking. That would be bad behavior. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, absolutely. Just saying. Um, there is a documentary out about a, a certain park in New Jersey. Um, did you guys ever get to go to, uh, I never went to action park. You never went to action oh, park. I've been, I never yeah, went to I've been to action park After as well. The class action. Oh, you did. Yeah. How, how crazy was that play? I went as I, a, I went still as a pretty kid. Sketchy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It was fucking nuts. Yeah. Even after all that, I'm like, you're okay with me dropping like how far down? Yeah. So th there's a documentary on HBO about it right now where it was, mm -hmm. it was the craziest theme park in America because it was super dangerous, no rules. And you had to drive through these, like, they were like, they touted it as like the zoo. You know, you have the zoo on the drive through right? Yeah. And it was like, it was live fucking animals. Well, one of the medevac services in New Jersey put a helicopter within like 10 miles, specifically for that park. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, you guys are, are this dangerous. We're just going to put a whole helicopter here. Yeah. For when people fuck themselves up. It's it obviously to serve all of northern New Jersey. It Bullshit. just so happened that we happen to land <laughs> all the time for that park. At Action <laughs> Park, yeah. My God, man. I, the shit that went on there, it, it's hard to describe because like, there's no way any of that would go on today. And again, like the animals would come up to your car and fuck up your car. Like, and they would tell you not to feed, you know, don't stick things out the window or whatever. And of it was course, like, people still did. Yes, yeah, and, and they were we getting, follow rules in that state. And they were getting bitten. But, but like the yeah. animals were biting people and then they, that was just getting into the park. And then once you were in there, everybody was high. Like there was no rules. It was like, yeah, I guess you can go on. Uh, seat belts, uh, who cares? Yeah, I think you're fine in that fucking place. Um, dangerous as shit, but it's, it's classic New Jersey. Yeah. Oh, 100%. Yeah. Well, I mean, go down to the shore. Oh, you think yeah. those rides yeah. that used to be, I don't know if they're even back yet, but those rides used to be down there, you think those are safe? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, not Come on, man. Look at the guy running the thing. You, not don't, you don't give somebody that looks like that the keys to something that works properly, ever. Ever. Because ever. you know it's not going to get returned in that same condition. It was Sandy so, kind of, you know, did away with most of those rides and they had to yeah. build yeah, fresh. They, they, yeah, they for they sure. But, them all, but yeah. think, about, think about it from this perspective. You've got a fucking 1982 Dodge Dart and some fucking shitback friend of yours walks up and says, hey, can you use your car? I'd be like, yeah, probably. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, however, if you have like a new Range Rover, it's a different scenario entirely. And uh, I'll say this, the shore is not a Range Rover. No. No, Clearly, definitely Clearly, based not. on the kind of people that work there, I can tell that. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, worst Atlantic City story. How many times do you guys go out to AC out there and get uh, fucked up? Not as much as you would think. Uh, the drive. Well, the just looking at the two of you. The conference. Oh. Yeah. The EMS conference? Yeah. Yeah. So I don't know if it was a smart move or a dumb move on the state's uh, 
discretion, but they host the conference at Harris. It has yeah. a club, yeah. hotel, conference hall. It's a one-stop shop. Harris is a blast. So mm-hmm. what do ambulance drivers in New Jersey know how to do other than driving ambulances? Drink, Drink booze. heavily. Oh, yeah. So... <laughs> I, I, I'm sure people got super fucked up there. Oh, yeah. No, all it is is um, every EMT and paramedic uh, throughout the state of New Jersey converging on one casino, getting fucking hammered and yeah. fucking each other. There's a Walensky Brothers in there, too, like a fucking like a, some some sort of steakhouse to sober you up. And then the rest of it is just oh, just drinking and gambling. That's it. It's just yeah. pure fucking chaos. Absolutely. Um, You're supposed to be there to like take classes and get CEUs and shit, but nobody actually does that. <laughs> no, they just dude. go to the tables, drink, go to the clubs, and then you know bang other EMTs and paramedics. It was the first time that I'd been to a club that had a pool inside of it because it was inside. Obviously, it's in New uh, Jersey. Yes, pool after dark. But it had yeah, yeah sand, yeah, everything, and it was yep. just like, oh shit, people are getting in the water. And yeah. it was like January, and mm-hmm. I was like, holy yeah. shit. And they use enough chlorine for the Atlantic Ocean in that one little pool. You so have to. Like- I mean, you walk in there, just eyes burning, like what? The it fuck? is fucking disgusting in there. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But if you're looking for a good time and, and a real easy pussy, that's I mean, that's the easiest place. <laughs> well, you probably won't time. get uh, coronavirus there with all that chlorine, right? Not at no. all, because you're supposed to inject chlorine directly into your face. Yes, I believe. <laughs> yes. Don't even find a vein. Just any meat in the face that you can find. Just put the plung- put song. the needle in there and just press that plunger like. It's saving your life, bro. Anything fleshy, you're yeah. good to go on Absolutely. that. Absolutely, because um, that's that's what he meant. But yeah, <laughs> listen, it's either you're correct and you don't get the coronavirus or it's no longer your problem. Yeah. Dude. Yeah. That sounds like a win-win situation for everybody. Yeah, you're goddamn right it does. If you're dumb enough to do that, you didn't belong here. It's Darwinism at its finest. Yeah, you ever, <laughs> have you ever like uh, shown up to an event? It's like wearing clothes, man. You go to a fucking nice restaurant and somebody shows up and there's a big hole in the in the bottom of their shirt right here and it's untucked and stuff like oh you don't really belong here yeah like yeah. you didn't you didn't prepare for this at all yeah <laughs> <laughs> that's kind of what it's like on this other side as well you're goddamn Clearly. right last question jersey wise so when you're in the state of new jersey all right and you have to root for a sports team all right uh, it varies because you're you're in the tri-state area yeah if you're it in does. south it's mostly philly correct yeah. yeah so so let's go baseball team first who's yankees. your who's your baseball team? Yeah, yankees. yankees yeah 100%. Okay. that was quick yeah it was real quick so I, my grandparents because they were from jersey they leaned uh they were always phillies so they okay. always went to philadelphia right we always always watching phillies games growing up that was well it was the was lbi yeah, yeah. Right? Yes. Yes. southern new jersey yeah. is typically <clears throat> eagles phillies yeah, yeah. So I, you know where i'm going next football giants giants no shit yep what, what about you? Because the Jets play in the Meadowlands as well. They do. Yeah. So I, Just, for, for that's me, how I was raised. Yeah. My, I mean, my mom's a Jets fan. My dad's a Cowboys fan. And uh, I just like beer and wings. So okay. they got the roof of the hometown team. It's, it's going to be the Giants. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. That yeah, was a rough grew, game last up, night, by the way. My dad was a Yankee and a Giants fan. So it translated to me. Okay. Well, I mean, the Jets made it a rough game on purpose so they could continue to lose games so they could draft. Trevor Lawrence. Let's yes. be real about that. Well, no. Last night was uh, the Giants versus Philly. Uh, mm. The Philly was up. Uh, no, Philly was down by two touchdowns with four minutes left, and they came back and won by one point, beating the Giants. No one no, watched that game on the planet. No, so, why yeah. would they? Yeah, I'm. I'm actually just telling you in case anybody died at that stadium. Of like, hey, <laughs> that's where your loved one was last night. Everybody else is watching the debates. Uh, now's the point in the show. Where we get to the drinking bro of the week. Fifty million people, by the way. Fifty watched. million people watched that debate. Really. That is actually about 20 million 50, lower. 55 million, I think, was 55, the number. Okay. Um, it's about 15 million lower than the first debate. I think, mm-hmm. I think the first one clocked in at 71. But, hey, man, we're all the way up until the election at this mm-hmm. point. People know who they want. Um, I'm going to let each of you guys, since you guys listen to the show, give a, give a drink and bro of the week uh, away. Mm-hmm. Who would you like to give yours to? We'll start with the Buckeye first. Uh, let's see. Drink and bro of the week. Springsteen? No. <laughs> Man, I grew up in a little town of no. cold, cold miners. You know what? I'm going to be that guy, my partner that I work with. Not this partner, my old partner, my current partner. Okay. Mark, Mark Lavelle. Hell yeah. Yep. You know, 100%. when you're, so it's 2020. Yeah. And uh, maybe 20 years ago, if you had said my partner, people would have assumed business partner or. Yeah, your, I had to. Your partner yep. on the force yep. or yeah. whatever. But now it's uh, clearly different. So you want to tell us about this partner? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Does his wife know about you too? Yes. Okay. Yes. Good. Ashley is fully aware. So it's a thruple then. Okay. Yeah. That's good. Good. Yes. Good. Yeah. I'm That's definitely hot. Mark. That's hot. 100%. Okay. Awesome. What about you? Yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to kick it to my dad. So he, uh, like I said, he moved out here with me mm-hmm. and, uh, so he was a narcotics detective in Hudson County, New Jersey and, uh, as a nine 11 responder. And, uh, he was, he was such a proactive and like dedicated cop that, so my first birthday, he had a stroke. 
That's how they found his MS. And when he came back to light duty, he helped implement Megan's Law into the state. No shit. Yeah. So that's, I mean, that's a real badass right there. Like that's, look, you obviously listen to the show. We rage on pedophiles all the time. Like Megan's law is a big fucking deal. Yeah. So, um, that's amazing. How old is he, by the way? He is 61. He just turned 61 on the eighth. 61. Yeah. Cheers. Cheers, you guys. Uh, and then we have a personal one here. Uh, Rihanna. We only call her by her first name because I feel like everybody knows her at this point. Uh, day one, homie. She's always in the boards and we're live on YouTube and, uh, we're, we're always appreciative of her support. She sent us a, a care package here to the office um, of this wheelchair. Um, obviously, all we do on this show is scream out, wheelchair, uh, completely out yeah, of control. Time, yeah. And her note only says, wheelchair. Love you guys. Cheers, Rihanna. So we'll keep the, we'll keep the wheelchair on the desk here. Yep. And there's an, there's an outside chance, Dan, next week mm-hmm. we might be interviewing somebody in a wheelchair What's the protocol? Are we allowed to scream it out in front of their face or no? No, I think we do that in post. <laughs> post production? Yeah. Oof, but we get so many points if we scream it out like right to their face, like directly to yeah, their face. Yeah, that's true, but it is kind of rude to do it straight into his face. So. But maybe they enjoy it where they're like, all right, cool. Maybe, man. I mean, look, I would, I would hope that this person's uh, media team would look into who exactly we are, what the fuck they're getting into, <laughs> right? Before they send their uh, person on here, that would be good. But. <laughs> You know, sometimes people don't, and we you can see the shock and horror in their eyes. Oh, it's <laughs> or great, the elation. Sometimes it depends. It goes both ways. It goes both ways, for sure. Yeah. For sure. Like, I wasn't sure how it was going to go with Sean Spicer, Spice Dog. Yeah. We started the hashtag Spice Dog. Yeah. We let off the interview with that, not yeah. knowing if he was going to walk out. Yeah. And yeah. he was on Instagram the other day. Like trolling me. Uh, yes. Saying Dan's yeah. never invited me back on. Yeah. He comes up with a hashtag, and he doesn't uh, have me back on. So it goes both ways. I think Wheelchair will be cool about it. Maybe. I'll give it a go. Maybe we'll have to I'll spend, give it a go at the end of the interview. We'll have to spend 15 minutes explaining the joke. <laughs> no, I'm not going to explain it to him. What I think I'll just give him a shout out on the way out. And that way, if he leaves, like he's already gone, right? You yeah, know? I mean, he's not going to be able to get in here anyways. <laughs> That's right. Our ramp is broken. Yeah, are, you, are you guys uh, ADA compliant? So I, <laughs> here's the funny story. When we moved into this office, um, by the way, Alex Jones tried to buy this place before us. Um, so when, before we moved in, there is a, a back door here that's got a wheelchair that goes up. It's one of those electric ones that goes up the mm-hmm. stairs. So we are compliant. However, whoever was here, it was like a tech company or something before. Uh, whoever was here, they bolted that door shut. Cool. So I, I guess they hated handicapped people, but uh, we had to hire a, uh, a locksmith to come out. No and, shit. Yeah, yeah, and take the door off the hinges. So we are compliant because otherwise, you know, shit. We have a lot of friends actually who are missing limbs and things like that. Mm-hmm. Like, we can't fucking have that shit here. No. So we, we hired a blacksmith to come in and do it. Why they decided against it, I don't know. It frightens me of like, hey, man, did somebody break in or, mm-hmm. you know? Like, well, what was actually, the real before. Yeah, the homeless guy. After uh, I shot that show with Brinkus this morning, John Brinkus, uh, Giorgio went out back to, uh, to uh, check on the weather or whatever he does. That it's, There's a lot of smoke involved. I don't know what it is. But anyways, <laughs> he walked out back and there's a homeless dude sleeping right there on the thing. Uh, right outside on the, on the ramp there yeah no fucking way yeah. dude austin it, don't defund the police jesus christ man <laughs> you know what i'm saying like this is what happened to la i hope it doesn't happen here we'll see we'll see either way man we appreciate you guys uh, stopping by oh man thanks for oh, having yeah. us thank you for it's, having it's, us like it's, said, this it was 100 on a whim man you guys took <laughs> us in so i appreciate that oh stop. bring we're, me your tired your poor your weak <laughs> bitches <laughs> <laughs> trying to give me booze. Exactly. I don't know how the phrase well, Listen, goes. I was raised right. I wasn't going to come here empty-handed. You were. You, no, you guys yeah. showed up with a shit ton of yeah. booze. Uh, I'm wearing your shirt on the show, uh, and you're wearing a Buckeyes hat, so we're, we're all good. We, we had a blast. Thanks for joining mm-hmm. us, gentlemen. Uh, go to goodness. iTunes and rate the show a five-star and leave a quick review. It, it turns out that's what actually uh, gets you like all the way to the top of the charts. It's not the millions and millions <laughs> of listeners which is dumb. It's actually the stupid fucking button you press. Way to go, Steve Jobs, you fucking dick. They're just trying to get people to interact with their app and website so they can collect more data on them probably. Is right? that what it is? No. Oh, well. <laughs> no, they want, they, want the, they want the hits on their website. Oh, got it, it got it. It makes advertising revenue better, but I mean, you know, it's, a, it's actually fun for us too. Like it gives us good feedback. We like it, yeah. And so please go guys, ahead and rate it and review it. Yeah, yeah, you guys write really funny reviews. Really funny reviews. And somebody was asking, they were like, hey, man, we, we, it, was a, it was a sincere one. They were like, mm-hmm. we listen to you guys every single day. Um, please don't stop. We have no intention of stopping. I mean, I, 
Like, can't stop. Won't uh, stop. Won't stop. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Puff Daddy said that. Yeah. Um, and he's doing fine. So we're for real. We're, we're we have zero intention of stopping. Mm-hmm. Like I, there's not even a limit on this. Like we were doing episode 700 the other day. People were like, "Hey, you're gonna do anything like crazy for it?" And it was like, "No, probably a thousand at this yeah. point." But then after that, maybe ten thousand. Like there's just no point because we're just gonna keep going every day. Yeah. So until one of us dies, which. That we can't really. You're predict. not going to die in the back. It'll of an probably. Will tell you that. No, it'll probably we're not. Probably be Jared, right? Yeah. Although there's, a, I get a sense JT's that he might live forever. Was it like. I mean, he's he's definitely the withdrawal? most unhealthy of us. He's he he poisons himself with food a lot. Yes. Gives himself food poisoning. You and I eat healthy. And we're talk- he was just on the show saying he's not drinking for. Until- and that's true, by the yeah, way. Yeah, yeah. Sure. Yeah. during yeah. a coronavirus. Exactly. Pandemic. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. true, too. Yeah. So it's kind of a toss up with him. We'll see. It's always the people, though, that you expect to die first that don't. Yeah, dirtbags like, ah, live forever. Shit. Yeah. Oh, yeah. they really do. Yeah. yeah. Corilla's yeah. right. Yeah, yeah, he is. right. He yeah. is. Uh, shout out to Kirill out there. And uh, big thanks to you guys for Danthony, Danthony Holloway. I'm Ross Patterson. This is the Drinking Bros. Good night, everyone. Uh,